Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Yes, Hallelujah. he is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, God. Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, Jesus. Bless his name. Yes, God. Bless his name. Thank you, God. My name is Minister Jones, and I want to welcome you to Bethel Ministry Center. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord one more yes. time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'd like to welcome our first time guest. Yes. Amen. We love to have new people come yes. and experience the Lord. Amen. With us. Amen. amen. If you have not received your visitor's card, amen, please put your hand up and the usher will assist you by giving you a visitor's card right now. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever you need. Amen. If you need a pen, amen, she'll also give you a pen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Online. Amen. If you're online, our ambassadors will greet you in the name of Jesus and give you a good morning. Amen. From amen. BMC. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We thank you. Praise God. Amen. For his presence on this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's nobody like our God. Yes. Amen. We want to take the time to honor our shepherd. Amen. Thank yes. you, the Lord. Amen. For our pastor. Amen. Our apostle. Yes. Amen. Yes. Prophet Joy Mark. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is awesome. Yes, he is. He is awesome. He's an incredible God. Yes. He's doing incredible things. Amen. And I'm just excited. I'm excited about what God is doing here in the ministry. Yes. Amen. Everybody's blessed. Amen. Thank so many Lord. blessings, so many testimonies every week. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Every week there's something new going on. Amen. Amen. God is blessing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! And this is where we keep a record of things. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have announcements right now. Amen. Yes. And we like to announce, amen, that three souls, Woo! amen, were saved this week Hallelujah. and added amen. to the kingdom of God. Total yes. of five souls saved. Yes. Amen. 2020. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, amen. that new souls are coming into the kingdom. Yes. We thank and praise That's God, amen, God. for their strong walk with the Lord. Amen. amen. Let's just keep them lifted up. Amen. amen. Those who have given their life to the Lord this year. Amen. And we have another announcement. Amen. It is Super Sunday coming up. Amen. Hallelujah. And I love Super Sunday like you do. Amen. If you have not tuned in, amen, please make sure you tune in. Amen. And you come back. Hallelujah. Because God will minister to you. Amen. Even if you're online because there's no distance in the spirit. Amen. So amen. it's PhD, meaning prophetic healing deliverance. It goes forth first Sunday in a month. Amen. Hallelujah. And God will give you what you need. Service starts at 9 a.m. Please make sure that you visit our website, BethelMinistryCenter.com. If you're planning your trip, amen, there's some information that will help you there as well. Amen. amen. And now it's time for offering. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Yes. It's time to give. Amen. I thank God. Hallelujah. If you do not have an envelope at this time, please raise your hand. Amen. And the usher will help you and assist you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm excited about giving. God's been blessing me. Amen. God's been blessing me. Amen. He's been blessing me. Amen. And like he's been blessing you. Amen. Every week there's a testimony of what God is doing. Amen. You can't beat God giving. Like no matter how hard you try. Amen. You can't beat him giving. You know, I'll give you every time. He outgave you every last time. week. Amen. I gave him all, but he outgave me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He outgave me last week, and he kept on blessing. Bless his name. Amen. So you can give, amen, at PayPal. Amen. You can give at BethelMinistryCenter.com. Amen. By cash app, using your debit card. Amen. So our PayPal is PayPal.me at Bethel Ministry Center. Amen. Cash out is cash tag Bethel Ministry Center. Amen. And this is where we read our tithing decree in the place where God lives. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you will stand, amen, with your gift in your hand, we will read. God is awesome. The screen looks nice and clear to me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And it reads, because I am a faithful and cheerful tither, the devourer is rebuked for my sake. Because I am willing and consistently giving my offerings, yes. increase is chasing me down. Yes, I decree and declare that money coming to me 
for the yes. sake of the gospel. Yes, I decree and declare that Bethel Ministry Center will have an abundance of finances, properties, equipment, and my church will be able to do everything that God has called us to do as the body of Christ. According to Mark eleven twenty three, 23, we are commanded to speak to our mountain. Therefore, debt, I speak to you now in the name of Jesus. Be paid and be gone. Dematerialize and cease to exist. I now declare that all of my debt, mortgages, loans, student loans, bills, and notes are paid in full. Cancel or dissolve in the name of Jesus. Because I am the seed of Abraham, there is an inheritance on my life. Therefore, by faith, I rightfully receive all that belongs to me. Lord, you provide seed to the sower. Every time I sow into this good fertile ground, I reap a bountiful harvest. I declare that I shall receive my harvest now. I call forth raises, bonuses, unlimited commissions, goal-breaking sales, and extraordinary favor in the marketplace. I proclaim all of the monies, back pay, or settlements that has my name attached to it be released in this season. My business is prosperous. Clients are looking for me now. My products are sold out, and my calendar has gone from overlooked to overbooked. I am the faithful overseer of multiple streams of income. The Holy Ghost locator will bring monies into my hands, bank accounts, and mailboxes. According to Psalm 35, 27, the Lord is magnified and takes pleasure in my prosperity. Therefore, let the Lord be magnified that I am advancing in the kingdom of God because I diligently obey the voice of God. God commands the blessing to be upon me. I am grateful that you have granted me with many goods. Thank you, Lord, that I am the head. I am above. I am the lender to many nations. Because I am a faithful member and tither of Bethel Ministry Center, I do not pay full price for anything. Now, I'm in the land of the overflow. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. At this time, bring your gift. The usher will escort you. Amen. And bring your gift. This here is for the pastor. When the Lord touches you during the service. Amen. Sow a seed when you're moved by the Holy Spirit. Right here. Amen. And over here, amen, we have our general offering. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And you can give. Amen. And we have our change for change. This is special because this is for our you. Amen. So even if you're online, please, please sow into our you. Amen. God is using them in a mighty way. He's doing great things. Amen. amen. And you're sowing into their destiny. Amen. amen. So go ahead and put change for change when you give your offering. Amen. For the you. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll receive the offering. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All have given. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's stretch forth our hands then towards this offering. Father God, we thank you and we bless you. We bless you and praise you for everyone that gave, everyone who desired to give. God, we thank you for all those who are employed. God, we thank you for those who are looking for employment. Lord God, we thank you for opening up greater doors, Lord God. Lord God, a financial doors, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that the Bethel decree, Lord God, will be reigning over the money, Lord God, and over the lives of everyone, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, that you will multiply the seed, God, multiply the gift, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you now for the windows of heaven that you're open. 
and yes, enough, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we've already tried you and found out that you're faithful, yes, oh God, you over our finances and our circumstances, oh God. And we thank you for rebuking the devourer, oh God, because we have brought in our tithe to the storehouse, oh God. Yes, God. So we thank you, oh God, for our offering, our tithe, oh God, and every seed that was yes. sown, oh God, yes, God, in the name of Jesus and everything that it represents, Father God. Yes, we come Lord. in agreement, Lord God, that it shall be done for them speedily in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. And as we tell our money here, Lord God, we say, see you real soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Lord. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Lord God. Well, at this time, amen, we're going to have our pastor, amen. Yes. We're going to stand to receive her. Yes. Amen. As she brings forth the word, this is a powerful series, amen, called Sonship. Amen. I've watched the replay a few times. Amen. I encourage everybody to do it so the word can sink in. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you for the word. Hallelujah. Here is Pastor. Amen. Bringing the word. Amen. God Hallelujah. bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. God is awesome. Yes, he is. He is worthy to be praised. Yes. The men of God said, let them be like my God. Amen. They said, let it be like Dorothy. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Jesus. We thank God for the light. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yeah. If you're grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yeah. Come on, I know that I am. I know that I am. Yeah. Father God, we just give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise, oh God. We magnify you, oh God. We glorify you and we worship you. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for what you are doing in the heavenly realms and getting ready to manifest. And we thank you for what is yet to come. We thank you for the great gift giver, God. We thank you for the son, Jesus. We thank you for the blood, oh God. And we thank you for the Holy Ghost dwelling right now. Lord, now as this word is released, Lord, I thank you that we have an ear to hear the word of the Lord. I thank you we will see the scriptures like never before, oh God. Allow us to be challenged and convicted in every which way possible. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen, amen. Let the people of God say amen. amen. I was just reminded of something, so I'm going to shift real quick. Minister Jones, you still have your mic? Yes, ma'am. Did you share your testimony? Ma'am. I didn't hear it. Did you share it? No, ma'am. I'm going to share my testimony. Okay, that's okay. Hey, we believe in testimonies in this house. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 We believe in testimonies. Amen. 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 Um, this morning when I got to church, I broke my glasses and I tried to. Uh, Come on. She's like, oh, wow. But you said, oh, wow. Come on. Come on. I tried to super glue them together. Amen. Didn't work. And so I took about 15 minutes and I just came up. I was like, oh, Pastor. I'm not going to be able to read the scriptures because I broke my glasses. And so because um, Prophet Trey had a miracle uh, maybe about two years ago about his glasses, radical faith. He broke it. Now, he broke his on purpose, intentionally. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Mine was an accident. <laughs> Amen. And so um, pastor said, well, you know, man of God, lay your hands. Well, come pray. And they both came in agreement, and they began to pray for me. Amen. And as they began to pray for me, I began to see. And so the first time pastor commanded me to see, it was like the the uh, the fuzz was going sideways this way. And then the second time she was like, line up, and she cast out some stuff, rebuked some stuff. And then she commanded again, and then it was lining up this way. And then she said, I wanted to come into laser focus. So she spoke over my eyes. Amen. And when she did that, I was able to read off the phone with no glasses. Amen. Without squinting. Amen. So, amen. Amen. So I give God the glory because he, yeah. has, he has healed my eyesight. Woo. Amen. He's healed my eyesight. And I'm, I'm able to see and read off the screen. That's why I can see it clear. Yeah. Amen. Without Hallelujah. the squinting. I was squinting with the glasses on. Yes, she was. Amen. Amen. So, so I, can, I, I can see clearly now. Amen, that the rain is gone. I didn't want to delay the service, but I was going to do it on Facebook. She said, now. You know, better now. profit now. Amen. So I thank God for healing my eyesight. Yes, so God. There's nothing too hard for God. Yeah, and as a, there's nothing too hard for God. And as I was reading the names of God this morning, she said, if you continue to read the names of God, it will clear up. As I continue to read the names of God, it cleared up. Hallelujah. 
So I thank you, praise God. I'm not looking forward to having corrective lenses Come on. or anything on my eyes. I can see everyone clearly. Hallelujah. Amen. My, my vision is clearing up. Yes. I'm not squinting. Yes. It's like it's, it's just processing. Thank you. It's happening. It's happening. Hallelujah. And I'm, she's a witness. Amen. Prophet Trey's a witness. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. What God can do. Come on. Amen. So I, I was giving him glory over having a fit, Baptist fit, but praise God. That's Hallelujah. why I'm Baptist fitting. Amen. Because Hallelujah. he's just that good. Yes. Amen. So I thank God for the prophet and her prayers. Amen. Prophet Trey and his prayers. Amen. Jesus. And I, I can see. Amen. I can see. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's my testimony. Come Amen. on. That's a good testimony. Oh, yes, it is. Come on. Somebody bless the name of the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Come Hallelujah. on. He's worthy, 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 worthy to yes. be prayed. Come on. That's a blessing. Yes. That's a beautiful blessing. You can still share it on Facebook, but I, had, I heard it gotta go now. Yes, ma'am. Come on, so we obey the Holy Ghost up in this camp. Yes. Come on, amen. Yes. It had to go right now. Amen. So you don't know what God's gonna do. Right. Come on, that's before service started. Yes. I'm gonna say that's before service started. Amen. Come on, we've been in here setting up, Thank you, Jesus. getting ready for church, Dorothy. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But God is good. Yes. Come on, He's faithful. Amen. Jesus. Nothing is too hard for God. He's amazing. Come on, he's a wonder. Yes. Down in my soul. Thank you, Jesus. So we're talking about sonship. This series has been life-changing. Amen? Amen? I mean, that's what people tell me. Let me say that. That's what people say. Amen. That it's been changing the way they think. Amen. The way they look at things. The way they understand things. So we're going to have another session right now. I have a few scriptures, but I want to try to make it short because we're going to go over it again. Because I want to make sure you get it. Amen. Come on. Amen. amen. So I, I don't care. As long as the Lord tells me to stay in sonship, we're going to be in sonship. We're going to unpack it. Amen. I don't want to rush through something and we're still not understanding what's, our, what's rightfully ours. We're still not understanding our position as a son. And I want to make sure we understand that clearly. Amen? Amen. So, like I said, I have a few scriptures. And I just want to kind of teach it. And then I really do want you to go over it this week. Because I'm going to dig a little bit deeper next week. But I want to lay down one of the foundations on today. The way we're looking at sonship, most of us don't have a clear understanding of sonship. But what I do understand is that we all know what an onion is, right? Sonship is peeling the onion. An onion has many layers. And we're going to unpack, we're going to peel down this onion so we can all, in here in BMC, say that I understand what sonship is. And that I need to understand who I am so I can receive my full inheritance. Amen? So I want us today, we've been talking about the opposite of sonship. We've been talking about orphan spirit. We've been talking about rebellious and religious spirit. Last week we talked about power and dominion. And today I want us to start packing the identity. Somebody say identity. identity. Do you know the enemy is always trying to steal your identity? Yeah. We know about identity theft. Where he wants to take your name and your people want to take your social security number and your birth date. But I want to talk about identity and what God calls you. And he wants to challenge what the Lord calls you. It's very different. Very different. So man of God, I want you to put the first scripture up on the screen. Matthew. And we're going to read this again. But I, I, I want you to see this first scripture. Matthew 16, excuse me, Matthew 3, 16 through 17. I want us to look at this. Like so we have several scriptures. I'm going to try to go through them real quick. This is about the life of Jesus. This is Jesus, the Son of God, as we all know. And he's getting ready to be baptized in this scripture. So Matthew 3, 16 through 17, 
when we had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a lightning unto him. Verse 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. I want you to leave this scripture up on the screen, man of God. I want us to look at this, and first of all, what we see here, we see the Godhead all in one sentence. The last time that we really saw that was back in Genesis. Talked about it last week, where the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis, God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So we saw the Godhead wrapped up in agreement about you. And now we see the Godhead again in one sentence. We see there was God speaking and suddenly a voice came from heaven. Who was that? Come on, that's God. He abides in heaven. His throne is in heaven. So God is speaking about whom? His beloved son, Jesus Christ. And he's identifying with everybody that is around, publicly declaring, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And then right before that, we see that the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God, the third person of the Godhead, is descending like a dove. I'm going to say like a dove because some people think the Holy Spirit is a dove. It's not. You see, it says like a dove. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a person. He has a mind and will emotions all of his own. Amen? Amen. So the, the Holy Spirit is descending like a dove on Jesus when he came up out of the water. Now, I want us to understand, of course, Jesus was already God's son from the time he was born. He was already God's son. But in this culture, in the Jewish culture, there comes a time when every child, and I'm going to go back to that later on, when every child grows, he matures in stature, in wisdom, and then he is identified as a son. There's a difference from a child and a son. Y'all make that mental note. There's a difference between a son and a child. Man of God, I'm going to need you in a minute. Come right back. There's a difference between a son and a child. Amen? Because the son is now more mature like his father. He has a resemblance of his father. And so now God is here declaring, this is my son whom I am well pleased. Now I want you to go to Matthew 4. This is the very next chapter. So if you're reading along in your Bible, it's, I want you to understand, this is the very next chapter. Matthew 4, 1 through 4. Matthew 4, 1 through 4. Jesus, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. And verse 4, uh, scroll up a little, thank you. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now I want you to look at verse 3. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God. Do you not know just the, the next chapter, the, the chapter before, God just said, this is my son. 
Do y'all see that? He said, this is my son whom I am well pleased. Satan turns right around and says, if you are the son. He wants to bring in doubt to you, to me, to everybody, to doubt who you are, who God has called you. So if he is trying to bring doubt to Jesus, who is the Christ, Jesus is the word. He is the living bread. If he's trying to bring doubt of who God called him to be, what do you think Satan is going to do to you? Worse. Come on, think about that. If Jesus wasn't off limits, what makes you think you'll be off limits? If you are the son of God, then command these stones to become bread. And Jesus replied to him, it is written. You better know your word. Jesus said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Satan didn't get into a debate with Satan about, I am the son of God. He didn't go back and forth. He just said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus was confident in who he was. I am a son of God. I've known it a long time ago, but he just declared it and confirmed it in front of everybody. And here you come along trying to ask me who I am. I already know who I am. But let me tell you what the word says. The word says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Satan, we understand, we understand his job description is to kill, steal, and destroy. He's always doing his job description. Come on. He's working his job description better than some of y'all do your job description. Come on. Can I tell you that's the truth? Does he take a day off? Come on. No vacation. No paid time off. Come on. 24-7. He's looking to kill. Kill your dreams. Come on. Kill your destiny. Destroy families. Destroy marriages. And to steal your inheritance. Come on, in the natural and the spiritual. Come on, it's twofold. Are we understanding that that's twofold? He likes to steal things because he lost everything when he left the kingdom. So he's always attempting to steal what you have. He lost his. I say he lost it, but he's trying to steal yours. There's a difference between something being lost and somebody taking something from you. Those are two different things. So we need to understand who we are and we are sons of God. And as you grow in the word, as you grow in your relationship in Jesus Christ, you will be able to look at the word sonship a whole lot different. Now before this, you better go ahead and give that Lord a hand clap of praise. Before this sermon series, we were on I am the one. And we focus on salvation. Is that not right? Y'all remember that? Because I want you to see something. We focus on salvation. The great commission. Spreading the gospel. You are the one. I am the one. To let people know that Jesus Christ is alive. I am the one to make sure that it's not just the evangelist to spread the gospel. It's not just the pastor to tell everybody about the kingdom of God. No, everybody is responsible. If you are a child of God, it's your responsibility to tell somebody else. So we went through that whole series about being a believer. But can I tell you, sonship takes some time. You know, I can give my life to Christ right now. At that moment. The Holy Ghost will come into my heart. My spirit is no longer dead. It's alive. But learning who I am is a process. Learning I'm more than just um, a believer. Are y'all understanding that? Because the thing, what I'm about to share is going to, it might hurt some people. Because it's a mindset shift. Come on, somebody said. To help me, Jesus, to shift my mind. 
Because when we give our life to Christ, I'm a, I'm a brand new believer. Yeah. Right? We're excited about it. We take pride in it. I'm a believer. Yeah. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And then we may say, uh, I'm a servant of the king. Are we not? Yeah. Yes. We serve the king. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. I'm a servant. Yes. Yeah. But can I tell you, when you start shifting things and start growing in your walk with the Lord, you look at things a little bit different from servant to sonship. Amen? So we're getting ready to go to Galatians. We're going to the book of Galatians. This is Paul writing to the Galatians. Because he's trying to tell them of the new position you are now in. Somebody just say, help me, Holy Ghost. Because we all going to need some help. Amen. Like I said, I'm going to make it real short. I got one more scripture after this, and that's it. Because we need time to process. How do I know that? Because when you have been doing something for 10 years, 20 years, it's going to take some time for some new understanding to come in from a different perspective. It's going to take a minute for you to say, wait a minute, what did I just read? Let, I need to let that marinate. Come on, I got some marinators in the house. I need to let that sit. I got to chew on that for a minute. And that's what's going to happen, I promise you. Because I'm changing, let me, let me not say this, the word is going to change the way you look at things now. But it's on the screen so you can see with your own eyes. Galatians 3, 26 through 29. For if you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, for as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Adam's seed and heirs according to the promise. Paul is trying to say, I want you to understand, once you have said yes to Jesus, once you have given your life to Jesus Christ, he's saying everything else doesn't matter. Well, I'm a Jew, I'm better than you. I'm a Greek. No, all of that, he's saying all of that is secondary. Do you see that? Jew or Greek, slave or free, female or male, none of that is important because you are one in Christ Jesus. None of that is important. You're a son. Come on, it's not about I'm a male gender. It's about human. I'm a son. Do we understand that? Because sons have a right to things that a slave does not. Come on, when you're a slave, when you're a servant, ah. Uh, come on. How do say a boom? Because it was a boom right there. Because servants don't have access to what sons have access to. Amen. Come on, I'm challenging people Amen. now. Because, you know, we grow up here. You better say you're a servant. Amen. Is that not right? Yeah. That's how it's ingrained. When you give your life to Christ, you better know you're a servant of the king. That's how I was taught. Anybody else thought like that? And so now Paul is saying, wait a minute. Because slave and servant is like, he said this right here. They on the same page. He said, but you're now a son. Because a son is an heir. Servants are not heirs. Slaves are not heirs. And if you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I know, I can hear it. I can hear some people saying, I need to process that. And it's all right. Because guess what? You can't say my pastor said. You, you see the word for yourself, right? Is that not right? Amen. All right, man of God, go get me Galatians 4. We're going to the very next chapter. This is the last verse in uh, chapter 3. This is the last verse in chapter 3. What does that mean? He went from saying this 
right over to what you're about to see. We're going into Galatians 4. Remember this now. None of that matters. Jew, Greek, female, male, it doesn't matter. We're all heirs. Now listen to this. Because we're going to dive deeper. I'm telling you, it's the difference between a child and a son back in this culture when the word was written. Okay? Let me say it again. There's a difference between a child and a son when the Bible was written. There was a difference. So I want you to see this. We're in Galatians 4. And we're going to read 1 through 7. Sons and heirs through Christ. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Hmm. Did y'all see that? Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Whew. That's something serious. Because this word, the Bible, is saying that a child and a slave is the same as in the same book. A child, your baby, a child and a slave, they on the same wavelength. Y'all see that, right? Okay. Though he is a master of all of it, the child. He's a master of all of it, but he is under guardians and stewards until the appointed time by the father. Y'all getting it? Is it clicking for some of you? You're a son. This is all of yours, but you're really not ready to handle any of this. Come on, you got a child that's five years old? You're not going to give them the keys to your car. Because you know they really can't handle it. It will destroy them. But it all belongs to them. But there's an appointed time that the father says, now I can release this to you. I'm in verse 3 now. Come on, John said it's witnessing in my spirit. Even so we, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time has come, somebody say fullness of time. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive adoption as sons. Come on, it's, it's working, right? I'm going to read it again. Amen. When we were children, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Because remember it's saying a, a, a slave and a child is on the same wavelength. There's no difference. That's a hard pill to swallow. But it's the word. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born to a woman, born under the law. The law is what? Moses. That's what he's talking about, Moses. The Mosaic law. See, God... God is powerful. God is omnipresent, omniscient. But guess what? God followed his own laws that he put in place. Can no man come to the earth unless he comes through a woman? So this is what God put in place. And he said, I got to obey my own rules. I got to follow my own rules. Let me wrap myself in humanity and divinity and, and, and be born to a woman under the law. To redeem those who were under the law. Yes. See, Adam couldn't redeem anybody because he wasn't under the law. Yes. Are you understanding me? But Jesus couldn't redeem because he was under the law. He came through a woman. So he was that classified us. Yes. To redeem those who were 
redeem those who were born under, to those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. Come on. And because you are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his sons into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Abba means daddy. Like a little child running outside. Daddy, daddy, daddy's home. It's tender. It's sweet. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then you're an heir of God through what? Through who? Christ. Come on, that's something to be grateful. Because I said yes to Jesus. Because I turned my life around. Come on, place my feet on, I'm not saying it, but place my feet on higher ground. Come on, I said yes to Jesus. So when the fullness of time comes, some of us, some of you are in the fullness of time where I'm ready to transition from child. I'm ready to transition from servant. I'm ready to transition to sonship. I just got saved yesterday. I'm a, I'm a brand new believer. Come on. I'm a babe in Christ. We thank God for you. We're excited that you're in the kingdom. But let me walk you on over here. Because it's a fullness of time coming to BMC. Come on. There's a fullness of time in BMC. You need to know who you are. And that's the son of God. Because we're heir to everything. Hey, baba, baba, roko, baba, shut up. We are son of God. Set forth the spirit of his sons into your hearts. So those that belong to Jesus, your heart yearns for your father. Yes. Hey, baba, baba, roko, baba, shut up. Those that are sons of God, there is something in your heart that is crying out Abba, Father. Yes. Yes. Because I'm no longer a slave. Come on, that's the past. I'm no longer a bond servant. That is the what? The past. And even when we gave our life to Christ, we still could not understand there was a separation between slave, between servant, between child, and son. So when God said in Matthew, this is my son, who I am well pleased, there was a fullness of time that Jesus was ready to be recognized that's my son. It's the fullness of time. It's time for everybody to see this is my son. Are y'all understanding that? There's a fullness of time. Hallelujah. We already know that Jesus is the son of God. But the father makes a decision. When now you're not a child anymore. You've been matured. Come on, there's wisdom on your life. I've, I've taught you in some things, and you've been astute of those things. And now I can promote you from a child. You see right here, because a child is the same as a slave. So now, come on, I'm going back to verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, he does not differ from a slave. There's no difference. Come on, that make your head spin. There's no difference from a child and a slave. The father decides you're a son now. He's ready. Do you remember? 
Do you remember? Jesus, the last time we saw Jesus is when he got lost during the festival. And he was about 12 years old. He was in the synagogue teaching. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. Does anybody know that scripture? Yes. And his parents had to go back looking for him. He was in the synagogue teaching. Right? Yes. That was at 12. Do you know we didn't see him anymore? Until when he got baptized. Does anybody know that? Amen. There's a scripture. I wish I knew that scripture out of my head. The scripture says he grew in stature and wisdom. So between this period of 12 or 13, when it was teaching in the synagogue, the historians, I'm not a Bible scholar, but the historians say he was about 30 years old when he was baptized. So from 12 to 30 years old, there was some maturing going on. There was some wisdom going on. He was still a child. Why? Because it wasn't the fullness of time. He was still a child. Oh, he's 21. You're still a child. 25. You're still a child. Because only the father, the father plays a big role. Come on, even in the natural life, the father plays a significant role. And this is why people are struggling who have no father because the father is the one that says, now you're a son. And if you don't have a father that even know who they are, they cannot tell you it's your time to be a son. Because they're not a son. So that's why we have churches full of slaves. That's why we have churches full of slave mentalities. Because there has not been a father that understands the sonship to declare now you're a son. You've been promoted. Because it's the fullness of time. And so we have people in the kingdom of God that love the Lord with all their heart. They're sold out, but they've never entered in to sonship. They've never received their inheritance. Been saved for 25 years, filled with the Holy Ghost, love the Lord, living right, living holy, and they're still a child compared to the scriptures. That's a problem. That's a problem. So we got many, many churches that are filled with a child's mentality. We have many, many churches that are filled with a slave mentality. Is the scripture say they're on the same page? Then that's a problem. But can I tell you, if you're under the leadership of BMC, it's the fullness of time. Oh, I'm going to say it again. If you're under the leadership of BMC, because I know quite a few people here and online have been saved, saved for years. But you ain't never seen this scripture like this. You don't read this before, but you never had the interpretation or the revelation and now the manifestation so you can understand, I am a son of God. So that means there's the fullness of time because God released me to bring this word. He released me to give this sermon series, Sonship, receive your inheritance. There's a fullness of time. So we are not going to be one of the churches that is still operating in slave mentality, in children's mentality, as the word tells us. We're going to walk in our sonship. We're going to receive our inheritance because I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Oh, what a privilege. I said, what a privilege. Come on. Oh, what a privilege. Because I'm a son of God. When you know your identity. When you know your identity in Jesus Christ. Things are totally different. 
Oh, it'll shift your mindset. Come on. You know, car, shift your, you better shift your gears. Yeah. Because now you say, oh, 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 wait a minute, back up. You can't just tell me any old thing now. You can't talk to me any old kind of way now. Because now I know I'm a son of the living God. When you are when you are aware and you're confident in your identity, your life will change. Amen. I'm gonna say it again. When you are aware, when you are confident and you're ready to walk in it, your whole life will change. Because now you're a son. Does that make sense? Come on, I, you say I, I I've been a child all these years. But now I got graduated. Now I've been promoted. The father has stamped his approval. It's the, the fullness of time. Now you're a son. I've been watching you. I see you've been in my word. I see you've been studying. I see you've been growing. I see you've been faithful. Here's my stamp. You've been faithful. You've been on the wall and ain't come down. You say the course. Now I can let everybody know it's the fullness of time. You are a son now. Because you've grown in stature. You've grown in wisdom. You've been staying in the world. You're a son now. You're no longer a slave. You're no longer a child. And I'm ready to give you some things because now I know you can handle it. You don't give a child things that they can't handle because they'll squander it. Mm. Some people wonder why they don't have anything because it's a child's mentality. Slave mentality. You can't handle the things that the king is going to give you because you'll squander it all. Because it's not the fullness of time. But those that are in sonship, hey, ba -ba -ba -ro -ho -ba -ba come on, I said receive. Come on. You ain't had to work for that. I said receive your inheritance. Hallelujah. I mean, what's, what's them people's names? What's that girl's name? The Hiltons, you know the, what's that Paris. girl's name? Paris. Paris, did she have to do anything? She was born into the Hilton bloodline. Yeah. All them hotels, what? They hers. Yeah, they Are y'all hearing me? Because yeah. that make, I put it in real terms so you can get what I'm saying. Because there's some people still struggling the process. Yeah. She was born into the bloodline of the Hiltons. Mm -hmm. They own all of the Hilton hotels. Right. That is hers. At some point, she's going to be in charge of all these hotels. She didn't have to do anything but show up in the bloodline. She was born in the bloodline. Come on, Dorothy, you with me now? She was just born in the bloodline. She didn't have to perform to get it. She's a Hilton. She been saying, I'm a Hilton. Come on, she was born a Hilton, don't die Hilton. All those hotels belong to her. Is that making sense now? I had to put it in regular terms for some people. I want y'all to get it. All she had to do was to receive it. Come on. Come on, a prophetic gesture. Those of you that are ready to receive your sonship, just put your hands out. Because I'm ready to receive what belongs to me. I'm ready to receive my inheritance. Because now I understand I have a revelation, a fresh revelation from the throne room. I don't have to stay in a child's place. Because it's the fullness of time right here in this place. It's the fullness of time. So now I can receive what rightfully belongs to me. Come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I'm a son of the living God. I got an inheritance. Come on, I said I got an inheritance. Come on, you better praise God. Come on, even if you online, if you know who you are.
I said, there's no slaves, not in this house. There's no slaves. Come on, Stephanie and Katrina. There's no slaves in Beyonce. Because we got a firm foundation. We got a new revelation. There's no, there's no children. There's no slaves. There's no servants. I'm looking all around, and there's only sons that I see. Thank you, 
Jesus. Come on, God is awesome. Come on, he's worthy and wonderful and worthy to be praised. Come on, go ahead and praise the name of the Lord. I am a son of God. You better say it all day. You better, uh, you better, everything else on Facebook, you better update your status. Tweet, tweet, tweet that. I'm a son of a living God. And I'm going to receive my inheritance. I got a heritage to receive. I'm not going to get chipped out of it no more. Come on, somebody say today is a new day. Today is a new day. Come on, what's today's date? The 16th? Yeah. So April, now something going to happen in April. Well, glory be to God. Yeah. What month is this? February. Thank you. So February the 16th, yeah. 2020. Yeah. It's been announced by the prophet of God. Yeah. It's been declared by the prophet of God yeah. as the king of his house, yeah. as the son of his house.
Come on, there's a place for you here. If you're online, come on, stay home. If you're right here, come on, woman of God. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we got one that's saying this is going to be my home. Oh, we've been praying for you, woman of God. Ah, let me hit on you. We've been praying for you, woman of God. All these times, all these months. Come on, how many months has it been? We'll bless the name of the Lord. Amen. So we're excited. Come on. We're just going to bless the woman of God. We have um, new members class to take you through, but we thank God for you. Because you like family. You've been coming all the We've been loving on you like family. Amen. We've been treating you like family. Amen. Ain't God good. You just said, now today I'm confirming that BMC is my house. Ain't God good. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I thank you for the mighty woman of God. God, I thank you, oh God, that she heard you, oh God. I thank you she was obedient. I thank you that she yielded to your spirit. God, I thank you that she God says he's going to reward you privately and publicly. Because it was a pull. It's been a fight. You've been fighting it. You've known you're supposed to have been here. But it's been a pull to your old place. So God says he's going to reward you privately and publicly because you said yes to him to be in your rightful place. And that's here at this church. It's been hard. You're faithful. and You've been faithful at your old place. You're loyal. I don't know anything about the old place, but I just hear the Holy Ghost. You're faithful and you're loyal. And it's been a struggle. But God going to bless you because God said, I got a new thing for you. Amen. God said, He's going to bless you real good. Amen. And, and even for the ones that said, You miss God already, be prepared because they're coming. But let me tell you something God says He sent you here. Hey. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey. You stand firm on that? Yes. There's no spirit of religion up in here. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. I don't know nothing. I just know what I'm hearing. There's no legalistic spirit up in here. So you stand firm when people come. Talking. Yeah, You've been warned by the prophet. Amen. Know that you heard God. Amen. Come on. Did you not just read that he tried to tempt the, uh, Jesus of who he was? Yes. People will come. Yes. You, you're supposed to be here. Where you... Yeah. No, I'm supposed to be where God sent me. Amen. Now, can you say, I, have I ever told you to become a member? No. Has anybody here told you, you better be here? No. You need to be, no. no. God told you. Is that not right? And you know the voice of the Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, God. Bless her real good. God, I thank you for her obedience. I thank you for her tenacity because she don't give up. Thank you for her fortitude. Yeah. And God, I thank you. I thank you, God, that today was the message that she needed to hear to know and confirm that I need to transition so I can be a full-fledged son of God. God bless her real good. Thank you, God, for sonship. God, I thank you for doing a new thing in her life. God, I thank you for taking her to new realms, deeper depths and higher heights. And God, I thank you for resting on her. Giving her peace. Giving her peace that passes all understanding to make this shift. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I'm excited for anybody else. Come on, anybody else know what it's like to say yes to God? And you, you got to go against your will sometimes to be in the will of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Come on, is there anybody online that said they wanted this to be home or they wanted to give their life to Christ? Thank you, Jesus. I 
believe everybody been blessed. Come on, everybody been witness to in their spirit. About the word of the Lord. Come on, amen. Amen. Come on, it's a life-changing word. Yes, it is. If you let it resonate in your spirit, yes. it'll change your life. Yes. You'll walk around today saying, I'm a son. Yes. And I know that I am. Because yes. it's the fullness of time. Can't talk for nobody else, but I know what's going on in my house. Yes. Amen. It's the fullness of time. Because the prophet said so. We're going to walk in our sonship and Come on, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man, hallelujah. Identity. Yeah. Amen. So glad we know who we are. Yeah. Amen. We want to thank and praise God for our pastor. Yeah. Amen. She has preached and poured out yeah. and got us straight this morning yeah. on who we are. There's no confusion. Amen. We are the sons of God. So we're grateful. Amen. At this time, we're going to dismiss. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue to pray for her. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our sister has come home to stay. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for the woman of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will dismiss. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we bless you and we praise you for this wonderful service. We thank you for this miraculous word. We thank you, oh God, for the miracle that you gave to me. Lord God, we thank you for the miracle of our understanding, knowing that we are no longer slaves, our children, our servants. But the fullness of time has come to be seen. And we are now sons of God. And Lord God, we thank you that we rightfully receive our inheritance on today. Lord God, that we will not look back. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that we will be studied in the word. So when the enemy tries to come against us, Lord God, we'll put him on notice. What did the word say about me? The word says I'm a son of God. Hallelujah. And we won't take nothing else. Hallelujah. And nothing less. So, Lord God, we thank you and we bless you for the beautiful service, Lord God. Thank you for continuing to pour into our pastor. Amen. And to our leaders, oh God. And to the members of BMC, Lord God. Even the visitors, God bless them on this week like never before. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we plead the blood over everyone, Lord God, and we send the angels of the Lord out, Lord God, to go before everyone, Lord God, to keep them safe, Lord God, as they leave this place, Lord God, and throughout the week, from destination to destination, until we meet again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Amen. Y'all get y'all goodbyes. Love y'all. Bye, goodbye.